2 is 1. Looking at the x-axis halfway between negative 1 and negative 5 is negative 3. Looking at the y-axis halfway between 3 and negative 5 is negative 1. Or 3 plus negative 5, which is negative 2, take half, negative 1. So as you may already have figured out, our midpoint formula, when we have two ordered pairs, x sub 1, y y sub 1 and x sub 2, y sub 2. We add our x's together and divide by 2 to get our x coordinate of the midpoint. x sub 1 plus x sub 2 divided by 2. And we add our y's together and divide by 2 to get the coordinate of the y's of the midpoint, the y coordinate of the midpoint. So there is our midpoint formula. Now we're going to be expected to use this later in, in the geometry course to do proofs in the coordinate plane. And so the midpoint will be something that is used pretty frequently, not just in this first unit of geometry. Also, there's two ways that we can use this. We can either use the midpoint formula to help us find midpoint coordinates or to help find endpoint coordinates if we're given the midpoint. So we're going to look at finding the midpoint first. And if you need to, you can label these x sub 1, x sub 2, and then y sub 1, y sub 2, and just follow the formula. So to find the midpoint, we add our x's, negative 2 plus 6, and divide by 2. We add our y's, 4 plus 10, and divide by 2 to get our new ordered pair, our new x coordinate and new y coordinate. That's 4 over 2, which is 2, and 14 over 2, which is 7. So 2 comma 7. Please take a moment to pause the video and try letters B, C, and D. All right. So for letter B, if you did 4 plus negative 3 over 2, you should have had 1 half for the x-coordinate. And negative 5 plus 9 over 2 should have given you 2. 1 half comma 2 is the answer for letter B. For letter C, negative 3 plus 3 is 0 over 2 is 0. And 9 plus 10 over 2 is 19 over 2 is 9.5. Yes. All right, approximation 7.21. This leads us to the distance formula, and I'm going to take a blank sheet of graph paper here to kind of explain where the distance formula is coming from. You don't need to write this down, you don't need to be able to show this, I just want you to try to follow along. I have a point in the coordinate plane, and I have another point in the coordinate plane. The distance from here to here, we're not going to count with actual marks. I want to find this distance. So if it was in the coordinate plane, I'd just use Pythagorean's theorem. This is C, and this is A. Uh, that would actually be A, and this is B, unless they're the same. I'm not sure. So anyhow, I would count this right here, that vertical distance. Well, that's coming from my points, right? My x sub 1, y sub 1 x sub 2, y sub 2. What this means is that this height right here is this height minus this height. So it is y sub 1 minus y sub 2. That gives me the vertical distance between those two points. The vertical distance between those two points is y sub 1 minus y sub 2. The horizontal distance between these two points is the difference of the x-coordinates, x minus x. So x sub 1 minus x sub 2. Well, in that case, I'm going to call this d, because it's the distance that I want, the distance of between those two points. Looking at the right triangle, we have that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, Pythagorean's theorem, following Pythagorean's theorem for right triangles. Well, we have this difference between the y coordinates representing our vertical height, or a. So that would be y sub 1 minus y sub 2 squared. And we have this distance represented by b, which is the difference between the x's, x sub 1 minus x sub 2. 
So all I've done right now is substitute in or plug in instead of a, I plugged in the expression y sub two minus y or y sub one minus y sub two. Instead of b, I plugged in the expression x sub one minus x sub two. That's an x, not a y. And then over here equals c squared. Well, c is our distance, so we're going to call that d squared. Well, I don't really care what the distance squared is between two points. If I want to know the distance from here to here, I want to know the distance, not its square. So how do I unsquare something? I take the square root. So in this case, the distance equals the square root of the sum of these two squared differences. So it is, I'll, I'll put the x's first, and I'm going to change it on you again in a second because the formula in the book's a little different. But we're subtracting the x's and squaring it. We're subtracting the y's and squaring that. That's what we have up there. Subtract the x's, square it, subtract the y's, square it, add them together. This is the same as a squared. That's the same as b squared. And now all I've done is after I've added them together, I take the square root. That gives me the distance or the value of c, the hypotenuse. If you didn't follow that, that's OK. Hopefully it made sense to you. But if not, you'll be OK as long as you can apply the formula. The formal formula actually puts the x sub 2's and y sub 2's first. I don't, um, because there's one other formula where we subtract, I actually use, and I should have tied that back to this, it's kind of like the slope, right? How do you get the rise? We should have actually done y sub 2 minus y sub 1 to get the rise, and x sub 2 minus x sub 1 to get the run, that representing our a and our b. So because I subtract first, and I always put rise over run, the book always does x first. All Anytime you look up the distance formula and have the x first, it doesn't really matter. Because it's subtraction, I do the y's first. y sub 2 minus y sub 1 quantity squared plus x sub 2 minus x sub 1 quantity squared. And after I've subtracted those and squared them each, then I'll add them just like I would if I had a squared plus b squared. And then I'll take the square root to find the distance. This is the distance formula. Your book will have this reversed with this. I put my y's first so that I remember that the distance formula and the slope formula are both subtraction, whereas the midpoint formula is where I add. So here's an example. We'll look at letter A. We'll just look at a couple for the video anyhow. Find the distance between the given points. You write your answer as an exact value and round it to the nearest hundredth for our decimal approximation. Some of you may need to do this again. x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2. For me, I know that I'm going to do the square root of, and I don't do the square root until I've done some other stuff and done their sum, I need to do y sub 2 minus y sub 1. So 4 minus 0, and then I'm going to square it. So that's 4 squared, which is 16. I'm also going to have to do x sub 2 minus x sub 1, so negative 1 minus 2, which is um, negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. Now you can write that out if you want negative 3, but it better be in parentheses. If you put negative 3 or opposite of 3 in your calculator, I think we've had this discussion before, opposite of 3 squared is the opposite of 9. But negative 3 squared is 9, because negative times negative is positive. So now that I subtracted the y's and squared them, subtracted the x's and squared them, I add the two numbers together. And then I can take the square root, which gives me 5. The distance from C to D is 5 units. For letter B, we're going to do the same thing. This is my x sub 1, y sub 1. This is my x sub 2, y sub 2. I'm going to follow the distance formula, which is to subtract my x's, or sorry, subtract my y's. y sub 2 minus y sub 1. I have to do x sub 2 minus x sub 1, so 6 minus negative 3. And I should probably write these out since it's the first time you're learning it. 4 minus 1 is 3 squared. 6 minus negative 3 is really 9 squared. 3 squared is 9. 9 squared is 81. So when I put these together, 
that's 90. I have the square root of 90. As an exact value, by the way, the exact value and the approximate were the same for that one because it was a perfect square. This would be the square root of 9 times the square root of 10, so I'll break it down. For my exact answer, I have three square roots of 10 when I've broken this down. So Vm is exactly three square roots of 10. That's equals. Vm, the distance from V to M, point V to point M, is approximately, well you have your choice. So you either put in three square roots of 10 or you put in the square root of 90. Either way, you end up with 9.486. Rounded to the nearest hundred, so I look to the right of the hundred, that's six, so I round that up to 9.49. And there are my two answers. Please pause the video for a moment and try letters C and F. C and F. If you did these correctly, for the distance from W to O, you should have gotten two squirts of five, which is approximately 4.47. For the distance from C to D, you should have gotten four squirts of 36.